After Alsace, we are covering the Occitanie wines. Why Occitanie? Because uh, administratively, in the last years, the whole southern regions of France, outside of Provence, became a larger region called Occitanie. Occitanie is also really interesting. It brings back to the memories, or historical memories of the region. Because what you have to know is that Languedoc or Occitanie in general are very ancient names that are referring to the way the people in the area were saying yes. Because Languedoc means the language of yes, and yes in this area, in Languedocian, was Oc. Okay? So the interesting thing is that about France is that the French that we all speak today, that the people that are, natural, of course, speaking French, it's coming from northern France. It's coming from the area around Paris. And in the ancient times, they didn't say we. They said, they said oil. And for the southern part of France, it was oc. So close, uh, close to the Latin, yes. So Languedoc and Occitanie, in this way, they uh, want to represent an historical heritage of the old region, and especially today with the denomination Occitanie wines. So we cover here the, uh, the, an area that goes from the Rhone River to the Atlantic Ocean. So a very vast area. But the most important area here for wine making purposes is the Languedoc itself. And what we see here in this chart, we see which are the main AOP, so protected denominations, protected denominations of origin, and the IGP, the protected geographical indications of Occitanie. And we have it mainly divided in three macro regions, Languedoc, Roussillon, and Southwest. As you can see also by the number of AOP and IGP, Languedoc plays the, the most important role for the area. So let's call it again in the old way, languedoc Roussillon. but let's talk first about uh, the, old her the whole area. We have here 38 AOP and 23 IGP, a very vast vineyard, the largest vineyard in France, 245,000 hectares. 43,000 hectares only in the Languedoc area as Languedoc and Roussillon area as uh, AOP. And this represent this large area represent 40% of the overall French wine production. Um, the export market knows mainly other regions. Why? Because as you, as you can see, about 200,000 hectares are dedicated to bulk wines to low quality wines that were dedicated to the local consumption or to the national consumption but things are changing because uh, winemakers have realized that maybe we have a very good terroir maybe we have very good grape varieties so what we can do is to start to produce wines in a different way so we have especially today the movement of Vin de France with which you can also try to experiment wines made in another way with different blends or different grape varieties that are possibly not the allowed grape varieties in the AOP or the IGP. There are four departments and we have 6,000 winemakers. And again, the ratio uh, uh, about the market is 70% to domestic market and 30% an export market, growing steadily. As you can see, the region is pretty big. We cover, as I said, from the Rhone Valley to the uh, Tarn River and to the southernmost area, which is actually the uh, French Catalan country. We will see also later on this Roussillon and the French Catalan country. What does a French Catalan country do in France? But 
in order to explain you this vast area in a, in a pragmatic and simple way, even the Languedoc uh, uh, body uh, thought about dividing this area in five macro areas. So we have here mountain, we have the coastal region, we have the central region, we have the south region, and we have the western region. So the western sub-regions. So as you can see, first of all, the mountain regions is the one that is behind the coast of Nîmes and Montpellier. This is an area that is uh, very close to the Rhone, southern Rhone style. We have here mainly the use of Grenache, Syrah, Carignan, Saint-Saul and Mourvedre, like in the southern Rhone Valley. Uh, then we have the southern region, close to the French Catalan countries, is an area that is called Corbière, especially, uh, because it's an area rich with crows. Corbeau is crow in French. And the vineyard is mainly dominated by Carignan, Carignana, Carignano, which is a Tyrrhenian grape variety. I will come back to this point later on. It's not only French, it's not only Spanish, it's not only Italian. It represents the culture of the, this part of the Mediterranean. Then we have the center, a flatter region, where normally we have a production of uh, bulk wines or cheaper wines. And then we have the Western region, in my opinion, a region that is today underestimated, but possibly has, in terms of quality, the highest potential of the whole Languedoc, where we find Limoux, Limoux, an area that is dominated by white grape varieties like uh, Mozac, Vert, by Chenin, by Chardonnay, grape varieties that are used for making the Blanquette de Limoux and the Cremant de Limoux, the famous sparkling wines that are possibly today less famous than some decades or centuries ago, but it's important to know that the first uh, tentative of creating the sparkling wines was uh, here in 1540, why this area hasn't become the sparkling wine area of France, because they didn't know how to control the pressure in the bottle, so that's something that the famous Don Perignon discovered a couple of centuries later on, could manage a couple of centuries later on. But Limoux, Limoux is one possibly, possibly one of the best terroir in France. It's the future of uh, enology in France, in my opinion. And then we have the coastal region where we have the famous Picpoul de, de Pinay, uh, where you have a strong Mediterranean influence, where the land is flat, uh, where we don't have high quality wines, but they are perfect for uh, uh, mass production and also uh, for simple food or a simple drinking. The most important department of the area is, is Ero. Uh, and you, as you can see, is an area that is mainly dominated by grape varieties. So we have about 70% of the production that is red variety, made by red varieties and 75, I see, and 25% of the production is made with white wines, but the white share is increasing. What is increasing also in the last year is the, uh, the prices of the vineyards in the, uh, in the Aero department, which shows uh, an increasing interest in, the, uh, in winemaking in the area. This said, it's much lower than in other parts of France or other parts of the world. If we can make an extreme comparison, if you want to buy an hectare, an hectare of uh, Grand Cru in Burgundy, you have to pay something an average of 5-6 million euros. Here, if you want to buy uh, an hectare of Pic Saint Loup, today it's about 60,000 euros. So it's about 100 times less. So this shows, yes, the potential, but how the market perceives this area. And these are the main grape varieties that are cultivated in the whole department, but this also corresponds to the cultivation in the whole area. Uh, we have 
Carignan, Syrah, Senso, Grenache, Merlot. Mer we have more and more Merlot. And uh, also we have uh, Senso, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Grenache Blanc and Vigny Blanc.